Good evening. I call this meeting to order at 6 o'clock this Tuesday, March 21st, and it's still 2023. Uh, welcome, everyone. It is really good to see everyone, our students, and all the white shirts. Y'all look bright. Uh, with that said, invocation and pledges of allegiance. Dear Lord, springtime is a season of optimism and hope. Thank you for the reminder of renewal that spring brings to us. You are always there, encouraging and speaking life and truth over us. Thank you for your gifts of wisdom and fellowship among the staff, students, and community of Southwest ISD. Thank you for protecting us as we traveled here and providing a way to meet, learn, and grow. Please guide our leaders as decisions are made. We seek you first in all we do together and lead us through our purpose and work. In your name we pray, amen. 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 At, this time, at this time, I'm gonna invite the uh, students of the month to come up and they're gonna do the Pledge of Allegiance. First time doing this. <laughs> Try it. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Roger and Javier, Emiliano, and Cassidy. Thank you. And let us now do recognitions. Board members, tonight is one of the best nights that we have when we get to honor some of the most outstanding educators in our district. Southwest ISD is truly blessed to have amazing educators. And tonight, we get to honor one from every one of our campuses, and I know that they represent the many educators that we have in our district, that we are so proud of their commitment and their hard work. And I will turn it over to Jenny to introduce each one of them as we honor and celebrate them. All right, let's go ahead and start with our Teachers of the Year. Tonight, we would like to recognize our 22-23 Southwest ISD Teachers of the Year. Their enthusiasm for teaching, love for children, and their expertise make them teachers that are highly respected and admired among their peers and within this great community. We thank them for all that they do, and this recognition tonight is just a small token of that appreciation. I will call each of your names. When I call your name, please come up, and Dr. Ball will hand you a special gift from us. First up, Big Country Elementary, Tony Davison. Elementary, Gina Huerta. Congratulations. Cove Elementary, Carlos Pena. Indian Creek Elementary, <laughs> Melissa Hernandez. Crewald Road Elementary, Suzanne Mutz. Suzanne Mutz, I'm sorry. Suzanne Mutz. Medio Creek Elementary, Olga Escamilla. Sky Harbor <laughs> Elementary, <laughs> Stephanie Thetford. Thank you for all your hard work. Congratulations. Olga, thank you for what you do. Southwest Elementary, Erica Foreman. 
Spicewood Park Elementary, <laughs> Amber Aguayo. <laughs> Sun Valley Elementary, Christina Pina. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. McCulloch Middle School, Veronica Gonzalez. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Teacher of the Year, Southwest High School, Cecilia Castaneda. Thank you for what you do. Mr. Compos will take a group shot first. I love everybody's doing their hair. Attached to that is a check 
it's a little token from behalf of our board to say thank you so much for all the long hours and all the work that you put in. So from the bottom of our hearts, we say thank you all to you. For all the Okay, now I'll move on to Students of the Month. Please sit down. <laughs> You're standing the whole rest of the board meeting. <laughs> Would Javier Gomez please come forward? Javier Gomez is a fifth grade bilingual student. He's been chosen as Student of the Month for Sky Harbor Elementary. Javier's love for history is evident, and he's a bright young man with an infectious personality. He greets others with a smile and is always willing to lend a helping hand, which brings joy to everyone's day. His bilingual teacher, Ms. Cantu, is also here uh, to recognize him in Spanish. Congratulations. Good job. I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> And I'm doing this right now. Javier Gómez es un, es, es un estudiante bilingüe de quinto grado en la escuela primaria de Sky Harbor. Él ha sido seleccionado y reconocido como el estudiante del mes de la escuela de, de Sky Harbor. Javier es un joven brillante con amor por, por la histor historia. Su personalidad es fácil de amar y su humor su amor traer alegría a, a, a tu día. Entra a la clase con una sonrisa, saluda a, a los demás y nunca duda en echar una mano. Su amor por lectura, por la lectura es evidente cada vez que toma un libro y solo quiere compartir lo que ha leído. Javier es responsable en la patrulla de seguridad de Sky Harbor y toma su trabajo en serio. Llega a tiempo para el, para el deber de la mañana su presen se presenta en la oficina a las 8 o 5 de la mañana para su parte de lo en los anuncios de la mañana y regresa a la clase listo para trabajar. Es un, es un estudiante de cuadro de honor con un gran récord de asistencia y es un modelo a seguir para otros estudiantes a nuestra escuela. A menudo ayuda a otro estudiante de nuestra clase utilizando su bilingüismo con ventaja. Asistirá a la escuela secundaria McAuliffe y seguirá, seguirá los pasos de su hermano a unirse al McAuliffe Mariachi Group. Javier merece este reconocimiento porque sabe lo valioso que es ser un aprendiz continuo. selected for the student of the month for McNair Middle School. He's a seventh grade challenger who participates in our gifted and talented program and is a member of the football and soccer teams. From the start of the year until now, Miliano has distinguished himself from others by displaying the values of what it means to be a student athlete at McNair. Teamwork, involvement, happiness, and integrity. He's excelled on the soccer field by scoring more than 10 goals and a hat trick three goals in his last game. He will be a great addition to the Dragon Powerhouse soccer team. Professional clubs need to be ready for this all-star. His most admired trait is his education excellence in the classroom. Without a doubt, he has demonstrated many students, parents, and professionals to perform at such a high level, both in terms of mastery level on the star and being an avid peer tutor to his classmates. McNair is very proud of all of Emiliano's accomplishments and contributions to McNair. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cassidy Casares. 
Southwest Legacy High School pro proudly recognizes Cassidy as Student of the Month for her exceptional leadership and dedication to her school community. Cassidy serves as the Vice President of her Senior Class and Student Council, where she demonstrates outstanding leadership skills. Her passion for helping others is evident in her involvement in the Best Buddies program, where she dedicates her time to assisting special needs students on campus. She participates in Play Day Fridays and takes the students for walks, making a positive impact on their lives. Cassidy's commitment to community service extends to her membership in the Southwest Legacy Interact Club. She actively participates in donation drives and assists in organization events that benefit the campus and the surrounding community. Additionally, she is a standout student in her business program, having earned industry-based certification and serving as the historian officer for the Business Practicum Association. Cassidy excels in her role, showing her expertise in customer service, time management, and accounting. Cassidy's dedication to her school is also apparent in her contributions to various spirit events on campus, including pep rallies, varsity games, and poster making campaigns. She takes the initiative on creative projects and has led student council meetings and fundraisers. Her teachers describe her as exceptionally reliable, responsible, and dedicated. Cassidy's strong work ethic is also evident in her academics where she ranks in the top 20% of her graduating class. Cassidy has a keen interest in health science and plans to pursue a career in sonography. She will be attending St. Philip's College in the fall to pursue her dreams of becoming a sonographer. Cassidy's unwavering commitment to her goals in her community is truly admirable, and Southwest Legacy High School is honored to have her as a student. Thank you. And once again, congratulations to all of you. The reasons we are here are students and uh, the people that we try to do all we can for are you and White. Uh, I know it's never enough. Uh, I don't know if Austin will ever help us make it enough, but we, we will continue trying. Okay, once again, thank you. At this time, this has been the most exciting part of the meeting. <laughs> so we're going to take about a two, three minute break and allow you to exit the building unless you want to stay with us for the not so exciting part of the meeting. Okay? Thank you again for, for being here and for what you do, all of you.
Okay. Board members, uh, you've had the consent agenda before you. This is the best one. Do you want to wait on Peter? Uh, uh, the consent agenda, and you might you might be visiting for a little bit. Okay. So we're okay. I move. I second. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda with a second. Any questions or any items that need to be pulled out? No. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Construction update. No, sir. Nothing, right. nothing tonight. Wow. <laughs> Is that, I, I have a blank piece of paper to it. Tax collection report. Right at about 92% overhead of this time last year. Oh, well, we are. Little uh, monthly financial report. Anything you want to add on that? Brandon? No? Okay, if you have any board members have questions, please contact Brandon. Investment report. Report on gifts and bequests. Enrollment report on page 92. Any comments on that? How are we doing, Brandon? Uh, Okay, great. So we're getting close there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Review of purchases over fifty thousand. Board members, any questions on that? Teacher incentive allotment. Who's got that? Yes, Mr. President. Um, we have a presentation um, that we want to share. I know the staff has worked really hard on this, and there's been a, a team that has developed this. So we're coming to the final stretches of it. So we'll go ahead and get started. <coughs> Board of Trustees, Dr. Ball, senior staff. I am so excited to, to talk with you today about the teacher incentive allotment. The teacher incentive allotment uh, was created by House Bill 3 during the 86th legislature, and the purpose of it was to reward, retain, and recruit teachers. Teachers are eligible to generate allotment funds for their campus based on their uh, performance, specifically T-test domains two and three and student growth measures. The district can also add in additional pieces like attendance, domains one and four, and any other uh, components that the district would like to include as well. So what happens is teachers can be designated as recognized, exemplary or master level teachers based on those observations and student growth measures. Teachers can also receive a designation, a recognized designation by obtaining their national board certification. And we currently have 15 teachers going through that process to gain that, that recognition. And once you have the designation, you have that designation for five years. These are the allotments by campus for recognized exemplary and master level teachers based on the campus. This is set by TEA and it's based on rural status, demographics, and other components that, that TEA looks at. And this is what we're looking at for each campus. TEA approves designations based on a three year process. So we are currently in the application process, which is year one. Next year will be our data capture year where, where we will submit our t-test data for domains two and three and student growth measures to TEA uh, for them to look at and then they will approve or deny those uh, that data validation and then we'll be able to designate teachers in year three of the process. 90% of teacher compensation does need to go, 90% of the allotment does need to go uh, towards teacher compensation. The other 10%, the district has the leeway to decide what they would like to do with that 10%. The spending committee, which is uh, 
which is overseen by Mr. Crisp and Mr. Manzanares, have decided that that 10% is to go towards TRS member and care, uh, the, to support the TRS, TRS member and care contributions and any other costs associated with that. We're looking at rolling in all of our teachers by year four. We're gonna start with K through eight reading and math teachers in year one, algebra one and English one and two. In year two, we're gonna phase in pre-K, social studies and EOC science. And then you can see year three, non-star EOC core content, year four, CTE, fine arts and DAEP. So by year four, we'll have folded in all teachers across the district. Our next phase, our next steps, we will be finalizing our application, meeting with our district uh, committees to ensure that we have heard from everyone across the district for our local designation plan. And then we'll be submitting our application on April 17th. The, these are the individuals that are part of our district committees. So we have a representative from every campus. We also have district representatives as well. Are there any questions? I have a question. The allotment, uh, for example, for CASTEM, the, the first number was like $5,000. That's total for the campus? For the teacher who's designated. Each, so, and each teacher. Each, so each teacher will get, uh, potentially can get a $5,000 uh, increase? Yearly Every increase. Year for five years. And, and the state is gonna fund that? Correct. Correct. And so you can move up. So say in year one, you're a recognized status, and in year two, you, you mm -hmm. jump to a master level status. For the remaining four years, you'll be at that master level pay. You okay. can't go down. So if you're recognized in year one, and then the next year your data doesn't really, uh, it doesn't show that you're a recognized teacher, you still get that recognized pay. However, in looking at all, this, all of the statistics for all of the other local designation systems, that is, that percentage is very small. Okay. And the teachers are all aware of the steps they, they yeah. need to take in order to? Correct. So we've been having, we've been facilitating campus meetings with all of the campuses to inform teachers that this is coming and what this looks like. We've also, we also have our ambassadors based on our district committee uh, members who are also serving as, as individuals who can gain insight from campus level employees and then we'll also be coming out once we submit the application, we'll be coming out to campuses again to keep teachers informed of the process. Very exciting. Is there a board representative in that committee? Oh, we do not have a board representative on the committee. Do you have um, more in-depth uh, reading material that we can look at as far as which teachers were, but can you go back to that other slide that shows who's the first year? Yes. Um, the first year is just application, but the second year. This oh, one? the first year, there you go. Mm -hmm. So say at an elementary school, you have teachers that like they co-teach, right? One will teach math, one will teach reading. And so they would both, all of the like fifth grade teachers, they are all gonna have the chance to be recognized all in the same year. Is there a limit to the teachers that can be? Okay, no, so no there's no limit. So what happens is if you have a teacher that teaches a reading language arts, then, then she is the he or she is the student of, uh, has their student of record. And so they will measure their t-test observations and then their student growth data. What we're gonna be using for next year is map data. So that looks at, at the growth of the student, not based on if they pass STAR or not. It really is looking at student growth. So a lot of people have asked me, is this about performance pay? It's about growth pay. It's mm -hmm. about ensuring that all students are growing. Okay. And so if they teach math and they, they reach that designation, they will get the designation for math if they teach English language arts, they'll get the designation for English language arts. What kind of audits do you think that we would be per, um, be getting for these kind of, um, say if they were to get their masters and they're turning all the data over to the state, do you think that we would have any kind of audits that be forthcoming for us if they were uh, implementing like 
the wrong data or the data just got mixed up, uh, like for testing or stuff like that? So we'll only be submitting the testing data based, so since we're using a third party map for our first cohort of teachers, that data will go directly from MAP to TEA, and then what we will be submitting is the T-Test the domains two and three data from our, from our management system. The other part of that is that TEA has um, used the university, Texas Tech University, to do um, kind of to norm that, to ensure that they meet a certain protocol. So there have been districts that have applied, but because they're, um, the data that they have brought in doesn't match, mm -hmm. they have not qualified. Mm -hmm. So we have brought in, uh, we, we partnered with Region 20, who is our um, service center, and we have another person, uh, Mr. Garrett Landry, Landry who, is, who has gotten a lot of these districts <coughs> across the finish line for TIA. So we have a great partnership with both, and using their guidance, we've really kind of streamlined all of these events and notified campuses and their they're excited about the potential for an experiment. So what on um, the the T-test evaluation has both subjective and objective components, correct? What we're submitting to them is is what? The subjective piece, the objective or a combination of both? It's the ratings. So we're submitting those ratings that they receive for specifically domains 2 and 3, which okay. is instruction yeah. okay. and learning environment. And so what we're doing now is we're ensuring that all of our administrators are calibrated across the district to ensure that, that we are rating based on what the observation showcases right. and, and the growth of that teacher. Right, because different evaluators <coughs> obviously have, so you're training everybody yes. so that it's an even playing field. Yeah, so we're having calibration, a series of calibration uh, conversations and trainings that we've been having since the beginning of the year and we'll continue those. So this year it's been a um, kind of all together, everyone in the same room going through this work, but next year it's gonna be boots on the ground and so we're gonna have calibration learning walks on every campus okay. to work together. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? Let's calibrate what rating would you give that person if you were to, to do the observation today. Okay. Has this been piloted anywhere in any other districts? Yes, so we're in cohort F and so this started with cohort A. So now, now we're folding in as cohort F. Um, SAISD is actually on their third iteration of, of uh, TIA, and so there are a lot of districts who have already um, gone through this process. Can you elaborate a little bit? I think the board might be interested in knowing how um, this would, give an example of a special ed teacher. Yes, of course. So special ed. So say for cohort mm -hmm. one, we've got an we've got a kindergarten um, special ed teacher who oversees and works with say ten students in kindergarten. So that teacher will be will have a roster of students just like the gen ed teacher will have a roster of students, and so we will track their progress so that the special ed teacher also has the capability of getting this designation. So we'll look at their roster, we'll look at the student growth for, for that mm -hmm. roster, and so two teachers in that same grade level working with the same kids right. could possibly get the same Overlapping lesson. kids, right? Correct, okay. correct, correct. So does that help with the, with the co-teacher? I think that's what the question was, right? Does that help a little bit? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm just, um, I guess as long as we make sure it's fair, mm -hmm. right? Because I could, I could just see yes. the problems that might arise. Yeah. And I think it's awesome that, but I mean, it, I'm glad it's not just testing, test scores, right? Because the if they had a really good kinder teacher, that's why you know, and that's why they did well in the third grade because they had good kinder first and second teacher. So I think this is a much better way to uh, reward them. How much does it cost to get your national board? certification is there a cost involved or there is a cost and the district is is um, for this cohort of teachers the district is paying uh, the cost for those teachers so they go through a two-year process we have a group going through region 20 and then we have a group going through Stanford University and so they will sit for their first two tests now this summer so one is is uh, work pro uh, work that they need to submit uh, writing 
that they need to submit, and then there's an actual test that they will sit for. And then they will sit for the final two components in year two of the program. And so do we have any that are nationally certified? That Cur currently, no, we have one, but I could be wrong. currently we have one nationally board certified teacher. However, that teacher is um, serving in a different role in the district. They came from Washington State. And so they were nationally board certified there, but they are not serving in a teacher role. So in order to get this designation, you do have to be a full-time teacher or you can be a MCL. They have to be teaching 50% of the time. Okay. Zero eight and so year one is 23, 24. Correct. And so do they have, you said it's a two year process? For, well, currently, so we're going through the process of the application. So we'll submit the application and that will be the first cohort of teachers that we're focused on. And so once we've given our, we've submitted our application, our application has been approved, then we will submit data. Once Texas Tech approves our data, then we'll be able to designate that first cohort of teachers. We'll then begin to fold in the next cohort and the next cohort until we fold it in all teachers. Uh, is that list, is that all the teachers, does that list cover all the teachers on our campuses? Correct. No. I mean, let, let me rephrase it the way I understand that question. Okay. So if you look on there, please correct me if I'm wrong, there will be some teachers that do not qualify and are not getting this, and I'll be happy to give you some examples. But they have the opportunity to, no? No. So like, let's say a fine arts mm -hmm. teacher mm -hmm. at a elementary campus is, does not fit into your 2023-2024. No, right, I understand okay. that, but eventually yes. will everybody. Yes, eventually. Yes. Yes. Okay. eventually. I, okay. By year four, we'll have a folded in. Everyone, everyone has the opportunity to um, make the extra. Yes. Okay. That's correct. Right, but I, I don't want us to be naive to think that this is going to be a perfect system and that nobody would be getting upset about it because right. when it comes to, to money pay. Mm -hmm. and pay, Absolutely. there are going to be some people that feel, well, why did you pick these individuals first? And, and not so, but this was done with a committee. Um, this was done with a lot of teacher voice, but there will still be individuals that might see it a little bit differently. So it was up to the district as to the order that we're doing this. Okay. Brandon, talking about money, are we gonna be putting the money up front and then get reimbursed? No, this, it's fully funded by House Bill 3, uh, the teacher has the allotment. What will happen is when they submit the, the designation, the data, They'll verify and validate it, and at the end of the year, they will submit. They'll let us know who's designated and who gets these funds. So we'll do our normal process, uh, process for compensation, and then on, and at some year. point in the year, they will say these are the teachers that qualify, and then they will let us know how much they got, and then they will be getting the rest of the funds out okay. of the foundation school program. So they'll get a lump sum? Most likely. Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. and, 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 We'll, we'll even bring this this year, like our chart, because we may have people move in that are already designated, mm -hmm. and we need to have the stipend list approved because mm -hmm. we will have to pay for anybody else that's been somewhere else that's done this, and they are, right. they're already uh, qualified. Right. Mm -hmm. It's very beneficial for us to do it too, because districts around us are gonna be doing it, right. and they're gonna be saying, hey, I'm designated, or I wanna get designated, I need to go to this district because I can make 25,000 right. more or whatever it is. We can maintain so our competitiveness. Getting for teachers and our high quality teachers, right. uh, we, we need to have this in place or maybe we'll be looking for districts to actually offer this. Thank you. Are we uh, asking teachers to do anything above and beyond or is it just their work that they typically do? It is the work that they do. Okay, so that's good. High quality teaching in the classroom Correct. that translates to student growth. Okay. I would, I would also have to say, though, I think to, to get this growth, though, to be quite transparent, I do think it requires going above and beyond. Right, but mm -hmm. um, how do I, I want to say that I've heard uh, another district that was doing, uh, giving teachers uh, a, a lump sum like that, and I don't know if it was TIA, I just don't know, but it included that they had to work an extra two weeks in the summer, and they had to be available after school several times a week. That's what I'm asking. We're not going to be mandating that anybody has to, I know another district that says you have to stay till 530. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna mandate any of those things. No. But I think that in order to get these gains, it is going to mean that teachers do have to tutor, that do have to
to do some things a little bit differently in order to make this value added. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad we're not mandating it. Right. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bond update, Brandon. Bond update. I'm not going to pass up a time to do a bond presentation. <laughs> so let me pull mine up. You're going to. I got some. Not just like, man. Here you go. So I'm just going to go through this. I'm going to kind of go pretty quickly because this is a presentation that I've already done at the three committee meetings, and I'm going to continue to use this uh, in our meetings. And it's really just to cover the high level. It's really for this group, too, also to see uh, what I'm presenting, and just so that you can get the information, too, if you get questions. Uh, all right, so just some snapshot data. Just have some, like our demographics of what we have in our, in our district uh, for our folks out there, because they kind of don't know uh, what, we're, what our makeup is. Uh, you know, when we started our journey on, and moving forward with the bond, we kind of got to a point where we felt like we had about $250 million worth of needs for our future. Uh, and we, you know, as we started doing these meetings and putting these things out on social media, we're getting uh, some questions about, well, let's just spend it on teachers and other things. Uh, and I wanted to let the public know that, you know, our, our salary budget is about $125 million a year. And that's for everybody, all inclusive, with everything that we do with payroll. So $250 million really wouldn't get us very far if we even did that like one lump sum. So uh, we also, I, I looked at last year's repair costs that we spend out of uh, Mr. Kruger's budget. We're spending about 2.3 million just on repair costs and another 5.2 on utility costs and, and upgrading your buildings and doing things that are more efficient to bring these down, which in essence allows us to use those funds to you know, raise compensation. Uh, and so it's always, you know, let's try to figure out where we can save so that we can pay our people well. Uh, one of the main reasons, you all know this, we did the tours, we're growing. Over 5,000 new homes across the district here in the future. We got a, a about six apartment complexes coming on board. Our growth, you can see, is kind of in the, the west part of San Antonio, but this is us. And so you're seeing that growth really start to really take off for us. And so we're looking by 2031, we can add about 3,000 more students to our district for us. And it's really designated in certain areas. And you know, I know you know this. And so this is the chart that I share with them so they can see where are the hot zones in our district. Wanted to share with everybody uh, we're having conversations what bonds can pay for and what bonds cannot pay for uh, and more importantly cannot pay for and that's staff salaries and operational expenses uh, we use these funds to you know basically pay for upgrades to our facilities and our security and, and buying buses and, and technology purchases uh, sharing bond history uh, pretty successful history since 1999 we passed over six bond packages uh, the biggest one being the one in 2012, the 165 million. But each one of these uh, really did a really great job of upgrading our, uh, our facilities. We've had a lot of good renovation projects, a lot of new facilities. The probably the biggest ones, uh, you know, this is the Legacy High School resident area and then the aquatic center that we just did in the 2018 plan. So it's over 360 million dollars of what we borrowed and went out for in bonds that the public has approved. Uh, so that kind of gives you relevance of like 250 million. So like almost three or four of these can make up just that one that we're going out for. Uh, but we know that the cost of things have gone up and we have a lot of need. So we have two propositions. Uh, proposition A is the general purpose, which is pretty much all our construction for instructional facilities. Uh, and then the one non-instructional facility that we had to separate out is Southwest High School Stadium. It's not a full upgrade of the stadium. It's not the football field and all that. It's mostly the press box, restrooms, and the top part, uh, and, the, and the visitor side that needs real upgrades. It's been there a long time. You all know this. Uh, so just some highlights that I'm sharing for you. We have all these flyers. So most of these are flyers you're going to see. We'll have these available. We're going to start sending these out. Uh, you're going to start seeing these a lot. Uh, focused on safety, growth, and equity. Safety being the top uh, key to this, our top priority in this bond. Uh, upgrading perimeter fencing, access control at, at every campus, like similar to what we have at Legacy now in Southwest High School, where we go up the doors and we will be able to get in with a key code for teachers and have every door locked with access and eliminate keys. Uh, a lot of uh, safety upgrades are like our systems that are in place, fire alarms. Uh, and then we have a, a kind of out, it's not outdated yet, but it's going to come to the end of this life of uh, surveillance cameras. Uh, and then our high school investment. Legacy is uh, our, our, one of our major projects in this bond. 
Uh, they're gonna get all the safety upgrades that they don't already have, but we need to add to Legacy High School. We have, I know we talked about our staff the other day, we have some floaters. We're gonna be adding staff there. We'll probably continue that staff, and so we're gonna continue to have teachers floating around in that campus because of the, the size of it. Uh, and so we wanna add a new, uh, a wing, about 24 new classrooms. Also add a choir hall. We did a, in the last renovation at Southwest High School, we had a choir hall renovation for that school. We don't have a choir hall over at uh, Legacy right now, so that would be in there. Uh, and then ROTC, we're trying to start up ROTC. We have an NJ. NDDC. That's what, he's, that's what <laughs> we got over there right now. It's like a prelims to become an ROTC one day. Uh, but right now they're just kind of like figuring it out uh, and using spaces that are available. Uh, so we want to get a kind of a training facility for them and a classroom facility. Uh, Castam High School, uh, right down the street here. Uh, it's in one of our older buildings too. It has some areas that were upgraded, uh, but we would like to give it kind of a makeover, interior, exterior, uh, upgrade some of the infrastructure. And, and if you go out to the outside, we're, we're thinking about, for safety purposes, trying to connect the cafeteria to the actual building. So maybe creating a corridor down the backside that you know, when kids walk out, they walk out still into a corridor and then they go into the cafeteria so the building's connected. Uh, and then going into the labs and all that, doing some things different. Because those labs that they're using now are old art rooms and, and band halls, really not good spaces. I mean, they're making it work for the type of labs they need. Uh, and then going into the, the locker rooms and stuff, because they do have PE. Uh, those are some really old locker rooms that probably need some changes and uh, makeup and everything. Uh, Southwest High School is been through three phases over the last decade. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, really there is just continuing to upgrade that facility safety wise. Our middle school investment, all four middle schools, McNair and Resnick, I say McNair's not that old, but it's, it's getting close, but it's still fairly new, Resnick's new. We, we did McCullough up there in the 2012, we did SCOBY just recently. So really the middle schools is all about safety. Uh, and then our elementaries, we got uh, six elementaries, Seven, sorry. Seven elementaries that'll be strictly all upgrades to safety as well. So every one of these campuses will get something. Uh, we'll be doing a study trying to figure out like what's the next steps there. Uh, but those seven will be getting all the safety upgrades that we're doing everywhere else. Bob Bolt, uh, due to our growth in that area to help alleviate Spicewood, obviously we need a new elementary, but Bob Bolt would be, uh, it's built for 500 students. We'd like to expand that capacity when we expand that capacity to adding classrooms, the cafeteria is actually built for 500, so we would have to expand that as well uh, and make that uh, an extra serving and expanding the kitchen so they can serve the capacity that Bob Hope might see in the future. Elm Creek, uh, one of our older elementaries, uh, is due for a makeover, so exterior, interior upgrades, some infrastructure upgrades, plumbing, electrical, new lighting, paint, all the, the works that we've done at some of our other elementaries. The same for Creewald, a little different for Creewald because it is a school of the arts, so we want to do some enhancements in the kind of the arts area. So maybe creating an amphitheater similar to what Sky Harbor has, maybe changing some spaces that were more for something else, maybe a dance studio, uh, and upgrading the stage in the cafeteria more for a production instead of just kind of like what we have at every standard elementary. So they create some, some outdoor learning spaces for their, their academy. Southwest Elementary, all the same between, uh, like we're doing at Elm Creek, the only biggest difference is uh, in 20, the 2018 bond, we were able to upgrade the heating and air condition at Creewald and South, at, uh, Creewald and Elm Creek. We didn't do that for Southwest Elementary. So the biggest difference here, they're gonna get the same makeover, is that but we need to upgrade the infrastructure for the heating and air condition over Southwest Elementary. And then uh, new buses and, and a new, two new elementaries. I don't know why that slide's not on here. It was on my other one, it's on my Google one, sorry. But the major projects are two new elementaries. And then the Professional de Development Student Center Administrative Offices, that we don't really have a name for it yet, but it's kind of all-inclusive, giving everything that we have for students, uh, for our administration, and kind of a PD center, all in one place, and, and get rid of some of these older, less efficient buildings that we have people all over the place in. It's a safety thing, it's also efficiency in trying to uh, get people uh, in an area where they can be together, planning, and, and those types of deals. So Proposition B, Southwest High School, uh, we are we are in compliance, but as soon as we touch it, we need to put an elevator in it to get up to code. Uh, and so part of that is to replace that uh, press box, put an elevator, we can do the kind of the, the configuration downstairs for 
uh, uh, concession stand and upgraded facilities as far as the restrooms across the, the whole state. Financial, over the last five years, uh, we've been able to, as a group, as a district, take the tax rate. Uh, a lot of it was because of compression from the state. Uh, we've dropped our tax rate over 13 cents since 2018, so we're sitting at a 133.75 uh, right now. So if this would pass, the tax rate would move one penny to a dollar thirty-four seven five. I will say this: I don't make it like a a bold statement, but you know, if you're watching any legislation, they're going to come out with more compression. So more than likely, we're going to be decreasing our M and O tax rate next year. Our values will probably still continue to rise. So in essence, this could be a cost neutral to a taxpayer. Mm -hmm. But right now, based on the bond, it's not. We're going to be telling them they will one penny, mm -hmm. uh, which is easier to say that we went out for no penny because we tried that. It was yeah. very hard to convince people we were not raising their taxes, even though everything says we're raising our taxes. We were successful, but it's, we're going one penny, and it gives them an idea of what's going to cost them. <coughs> so at the average value of a home in our district is right at $198,000, uh, and then you throw, throw in the homestead exemption and, and some other things. So the, the average taxable value home in our district is getting taxed at $126,000. So a one penny increase of that, that tax, taxable value would increase their taxes for one year for about $12.67, which is a dollar five a month. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the message. Like, even if we have to raise it up to one penny more, it's gonna cost you $12 more. Uh, and then I have a chart for them so they can kind of see where they're at so they can kind of see what it's gonna cost them. And then I just talk about when elections come. In. That's it. And then I take questions. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. I have yes, a I have a question, yes, uh, Brandon. Um, you know, our community's been very generous, right? And all yes, our sir. bands, our bonds have been successful. In the past, our bonds, we uh, we ran through San Antonio Bear County, mm -hmm. right? So my question is, this uh, election year, we're going to do it through. Uh, Joint elections with City of Lytle. Yes, so our taxpayers are used to seeing the bond election on their ballot when they go vote San Antonio Bear County, um, and they're not going to see that this time around. It's not going to be there. Are we taking any steps to inform the taxpayers in our community um, that this election is not going to be on their no, as normal on their Bear County San Antonio ballot, and that they have to go somewhere else to vote uh, to pass this bond? Was, I guess the steps I would say we're taking is when we send out any information on where our elections are happening is going to be like the sites that we have that the election is. So wherever we're having our board election and bond election, that's the steps that we're taking. We're, we're not saying that we're not on the San Antonio side. We're saying this is where our election is happening at. That's what you're, you're right. asking. Well, I think there's going to be some confusion, right? Yeah. So my question is, so every taxpayer contributes to this Correct. bond, right? And not just um, parents of children that come to our schools. Um, so are we sending the information out to the in, to the entire community? Or yes. how are so we like, reaching out? How so are we on reaching Thursday, out? Thursday, we're sending the flyer out to every resident that lives in Southwest ISD. Okay. So, and then from there on, we'll be sending periodically uh, a fire home. Uh, and so we're gonna be sending something to the home over the next, till almost up to early voting. And you're going to let them know where they need to well, go. Well, we're going to send the flyer the that shows them where they can go to see where our sites are at. Mm -hmm. So we're not sending an actual list of all the sites. We're sending similar to, it's actually the green one. We'll be sending. So why don't we want to send them something that has the sites on it already? Because not all of our taxpayers are, you know, tech savvy and, and they don't necessarily have internet. Um, they might not be able to. Uh, easily access okay. the information. We could send something technology. out to say that our please come vote at these sites. Right. For the bond. Please. Right. Okay. Discuss that. Okay. Thank you. And right. just so you know, the one that's going to go out on Thursday is already printed. So yep. when you see it, don't think like, oh, why didn't they do it? We'll have to reprint okay. some of those. And when do you think the next flyer is going to go out? Well, the next flyer, we will we'll have to figure out how to get fitted on there, and then we have to translate it. So mm -hmm. we'll get it translated, and we'll send that. It'll be one of the next ones here in the next few weeks. Okay. It'll be before our people. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Huh? I got. No. I got a couple of questions. Um, for this, after we get the say, we're gonna pass this. Um, once it gets passed, do we have a, a idea of how this 
the order is that's one of the questions I got from the community. Oh, order like, the, yeah. like the what's going to be the first thing? I hope it's a legacy because we're over crowded over there. But like you know, it's just like people want to know how the order is going to come right. to when we start building, mm -hmm. or because then I got a. I was just recently at the the, the stadium, the and there was pipes busting, you know, and it's yeah. just like, well, then they want to know how does that going to affect football concession stands then the community wants to engage in those kind of conversations where how are they gonna the band boosters are gonna be able to concess when that goes into effect uh, uh, being concession stands and so there's a lot of things where the community is kind of like oh, what, what's gonna happen here sir and I'm like okay I'll ask those questions and that's why I said is there like any thing on the bond like saying okay we're gonna, this is pretty much present for our first because of growth and legacy really fast Probably the elementary, because the elementary, we're, we need to get another elementary in that area. Um, but I mean, to let the people know, like this is the pertinent to what we're doing. Like yeah, what we're doing, yeah, time-wise. Time. We'll, we'll definitely put together something for the board so you have something. My recommendation to the team is first of all going to be the area safety and security. Okay. Um, that is definitely going to be something that's first. And then making sure that no one is affected negatively by this and timing-wise. So for example, in the off seasons mm -hmm. of football, that's when we would be doing some of that. So it's not everyone is affected negatively when it's when it's the right timing. Mm -hmm. um, so no one's affected is when the timelines are gonna have to be but with the first concern being with the safety and the security. But we will yeah. definitely, right now, the team's focus has been sharing this information, developing this information, getting out to the individuals. So just give us a few more weeks and then we'll, we'll be glad to put a more specific timeline. And how have your meetings been? I, I've been to a couple of them, some people didn't yeah. show up. And then like, yeah. you, how did your Zoom meetings go? It didn't go very well, but I'm hoping we're gonna pick up steam. We've added some other things, and we added some extra meetings, some different types of meetings, and see, uh, I will be transparent. It's, it's kind of how it went at the first, in the past, and our other ones. So I'm hoping as we get closer, more people start asking questions, more people want more information. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's so many different avenues that we have now compared to what we did, you know, back in 2012. Yeah. So I just trying to use every avenue we can. We're sending stuff home to the home now. We're all over social media. We're trying to have meetings. I know it's convenient for people to get on a virtual. We're yeah. Trying those. So we're trying everything possible to get the information is, out. Is there any way for us to get on on television um, for for this bond? I I don't. I remember there's certain certain situations that we can get on television. You know, I, I will definitely ask Jenny to look into it, but I would also ask her to look cost effective wise. I don't think that we would mm -hmm. gain what we want in regards mm -hmm. to what we would spend. Mm -hmm. I know that just today we talked about some new things that we want to do. I know we're going to start combining a lot of efforts. For example, we know that a lot of our campus do fiesta events. Mm -hmm. When they do a fiesta event, which is perfect timing because of early voting, we'll have their mm -hmm. campus fiesta event along with 10 minutes of, of giving our presentation. Saturday, we have the first superintendent coffee, so we'll combine it with that. We also have Jesse and his team that are gonna be at the car show giving out information. So we're gonna start to piggyback with a lot of things that we know are happening. And also we realize that a lot of our own staff are also voters. Mm -hmm. So we know that we're gonna go meet with Chong Nutrition staff. I'm meeting with the secretarial staff um, I think somebody you're meeting with transportation. So we have a, we have a lot of face-to-face -face meetings that I think that the individuals within our district that really care and want to vote. I think we gain a lot more leverage that way than um, the TV. But we will still we can still look at it and, and see if that's cost-effective for us and if it'll garner. Well, the, it's more reaching out to the news stations or like to say that the like as a uh, story. like as a. Hey, don't forget to go out with that. I remember I saw one for, I think Judson did one. It was, where it was just like brief, the Judson's having, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to pray you, Judson. So, but I, but I, I don't want to go back to that, but I, I mean, it's just going back to where, like a press, press release type of deal where. We, we will definitely do that because I know that we're not the only ones, and usually the media does do that when they pick the other school districts that are doing it. I know it's us, Alamo Heights, and so we did it, so SA Report, Okay. It's just a timely, and then at that point, I'm going to give away my secrets. But I reach out to certain reporters, like, hey, you your story. So it's just behind the scenes, but they wait till we get a little closer. It's a little farther out, but I'll, we are working on that. And I, I'm, I'm 
misunderstood. I thought you meant commercials. No, 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 commercials. Yeah. no commercials. No <laughs> commercials. Not commercials. Okay, sorry. Not yeah. commercials. I, thought you meant. Not, <laughs> I don't want to know no commercials. I mean more reaching out to the news networks to help commercials us. Commercials um, are too expensive. Yeah. Right, that's what but I, I know. Understood. I know how I when I when I saw the bond for y'all, I saw how it went Stone. through the a news network and they said, Oh, don't like Justin's having a bond reelection and it was just a brief thing and it was like, Oh, they, they got that word out. So it's just I wanna make sure that we're question. using those networks. Do we have the presentation like on demand? Like if someone wants to j just can just click and the presentation comes online. up for them online? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. and videos and I will be sharing uh, we're gonna have uh, some like it's all informational. Mm -hmm. so it's just yes. giving information and so yes. even our principals for each one's campuses will be talking about the upgrade we're gonna be getting. So we're creating little short videos okay. that will even be more targeted. Just targeted for like on Creek. Yeah. On Creek will talk about what they're going to be uh, upgrading and, and doing. But just to touch base, I want to make sure that the board understands that we're going to ask the voters to approve $250 million. Yeah. Uh, and there's no way that the capacity of our tax rate can allow us to go to the market in August and get all $250 million. No. So I just want to make sure because that the bigger part of this, like deciding what's the most important, like, there's two sides. One, construction, what's feasible, what's important mm -hmm. today, and then how much can we actually borrow as we go out to the market, especially in this market right now, it's very volatile, and the PSF is kind of in shambles. So we're going to be working next week. I'll be working with uh, the financial bars of Mark and Andrew on next Thursday, just kind of planning this financially out, uh, looking at property value growth and how much can we actually uh, borrow at one point. So there's two sides to this. Uh, it's just going to take a lot of planning because I don't want to tell people right now we're going to, you know, fix legacy and that's not, it doesn't come to fruition because we can't borrow it. And I think, to, but also let the public know that we're working those issues with um, portables or working the issues with um, having stuff getting fixed while we're sure. we're fixing the, like coming to the bond issue because even this pipe's busting and then, um, Having the water sprinkle all over the place is just like okay. What do we? What, are you gonna tear this? The, the, the pretty much the vampires are saying, oh, you can tear this down, sir, and then build us a new one. I said, yeah, eventually when the bond comes, but when but until then we still have to patch it up and make sure everything works accordingly. Absolutely. All right, there you go. Thank you, man. Summer 2023 academic programs, boy. Summer programs already, Patty. We have Mrs. Covello that will share some information on. And uh, as Dr. Ball had mentioned, the leader and our team has been very busy working on our uh, summer school programs. You have a copy of the presentation there, but oh, thank you. But I would like to go ahead and go through this with you and see if you have any questions. So as you know, we rotate our locations based on the updates for any type of renovations or repairs that we have for the summer. So this summer, our four elementary sites will be Southwest Elementary, Big Country, Bob Hope, and Medio Creek. They will be serving their feeder patterns. The dates that we will have summer school will be June 7th through the 28th. That is 12 days, which we normally and generally have had 12 days for our students. A little bit different this year is now we have the June 19th, uh, Juneteenth holiday. So we will be running from uh, the uh, dates starting on Monday through Thursday. That week of June 19th, we will have the holiday because it is a holiday that Monday. We'll be here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for summer school. Summer school staff will be off on Friday. However, that Friday is a regular work day for 226 employees. Then we'll return back on that following Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday so that both our general ed and our bilingual program end at the same time. So the Escuelita program that runs over at Southwest Elementary will end on the same day as their other elementary programs. So as I have posted there, Southwest Elementary will host their feeder pattern of Southwest Elementary in Elm Creek. All of our elementaries will be offering retention in addition to the House Bill 4545 tutoring. Uh, they will also host our elementary fine arts program, which we all know is a very robust program that our parents seek out for the summer. They will continue that program there at uh, Southwest Elementary for grades three, four, and five. Our Escuelita program will run the same time, but they will also be running on Fridays because those students must get in the 120 hours within that month. Um, so with our summer school, we also have our migrant summer school program. We don't have as many students coming because they are migrants. Sometimes they uh, travel during the summer, but we will still offer that through our shared services agreement with Region 20. 
And then we will also offer there at Southwest Elementary the extended school year and compensatory ed for our special ed students. So as you can see, Southwest Elementary will be very busy. Uh, then in July, they will have some work being done, so we will not have any programs there at Southwest Elementary in July, and we'll turn the building back over to Mr. Kruger and his team. Correct, Thomas? And then at Big Country Elementary, we'll have Big Country, Crewald, and Sun Valley, offering again the retention, House Bill 4545 for grades K through five. Bob Hope will host uh, Bob Hope and Spicewood Park, uh, same type of programs, and Medio Creek, uh, Medio Creek, Hidden Coast Steam Academy, Sky Harbor, and Indian Creek. They will also be hosting the Say Yes and the Makerspace. Now, a little bit different for us this year is our counts. We don't yet have counts as it's preliminary because uh, TEA will not be releasing scores, and I have it there for you, until May 22nd. If we waited until the 22nd, it's a lot of scurrying about to do right before the end of school. So right now our principals have already sent out the first notice of retention to parents, just letting them know that it's possible your child may need to attend summer school and looking at benchmarks and common assessment scores. So we would rather uh, overpopulate our rosters and then be able to get the scores and then remove names and, and the campuses and notify parents so that they have enough, um, uh, enough notice for that. Another change for that is because uh, TEA uh, is now considered that the pandemic is over, there will be no eating in the classrooms. So all breakfast and lunch will be served in the cafeteria. And so we will have the open feeding program through Child Nutrition Services at all the schools that are approved for a summer school site. And so uh, all of the, anyone who comes from the community, <coughs> ages one through 18, uh, that's not enrolled in summer school, they can come for the free breakfast and the free lunch. Uh, they will need to be accompanied by a parent and we will have them go through the office for the Raptor to check in to make sure that they're checked in. And then Mr. Figueroa will provide that training to our summer school staff so they're aware how to do that. So that same process will be followed at the elementary, the middle, and the high schools. Uh, so then looking at our two middle schools, we'll be hosting uh, SCOBY. We'll be hosting both McNair SCOBY, both the academic and fine arts middle school band. Uh, they will also <laughs> offer the retention, House Bill 4545. We have the morning time, arrival times and breakfast. We've stayed with all of the regular times that the students and staff and the community are accustomed to. So if the parents don't want their children to ride the bus, they're still following the same regular schedule that they do in that area. So if they're used to dropping them off before they go to work, they're following the same schedule. And then McAuliffe will host resident McAuliffe, uh, Hidden Cove Steam Academy, both academic and the fine arts and middle school, mariachi programs. They will have the Escala, which is a little bit different that we won't have at SCOBY, and then all of the other regular. Again, they're following the same scores. We will not get those raw scores from TEA until May 22nd. So again, we know that those numbers will be over padded, but we would like to make sure that we're accounting for all. Now the high schools, we will only host uh, uh, summer school at Legacy High School, which they will host all of their feeder patterns and they will be uh, offering the fine arts, dance, high school band, and the mariachi. Again, their times are the same as their regular school year. Uh, Southwest High School will also host their high school students, fine arts, high school band, mariachi, theater for grades three through 12, just as we had last year at one site, and then all art and all choir. Now, CASTEM will be going some, uh, undergoing some work, so they will not have anything at CASTEM. Those students will be going to Southwest High School. Now, if you notice there, TEA really threw us a curveball. They're not going to release the high school EOE scores until May the 31st. So that is uh, the day before the last day of school. So again, high school uh, staff, they're busy you know, looking at those scores. We, we want to make sure parents are aware ahead of time. And again, we'll have to take, it's better to take names off at the last minute. That way for transportation, they already have those routes planned for the students. It's a lot easier to take the names off than to try to add them at the last minute. And so um, Southwest Elementary, the ESY camp, as I mentioned, will be at Southwest Elementary. And then uh, the secondary life skills will be at Southwest High School. So these lunch times, again, they'll be working on master schedules as soon as we have the site administrators hired. Mr. Baker will be posting those positions for us tomorrow. Those positions will be hired first and we'll have a site administrator at each site. And then they'll assist the high school, the uh, home campus principals with hiring the teachers for those specific sites since they're familiar with their students. Our PD day for teachers will be on June 6th and that will be from 8 to 4.30. I have some items there that they'll be covering with their site administrators. For example, they'll be covering the curriculum that they'll have and we'll be working with uh, Bonnie Robinson and her team on that. Uh, they'll include safety training provided by Mr. Figueroa. Uh, payroll paperwork and requirements, school procedures, lunch and rotation schedules, lesson planning, review of their student roster, roster data, which is gonna be a lot because it's, we're getting those late scores, they'll have to go through and check to make sure that we have the right students there. 
and then meeting time with their summer administrators and their room setup, and then they'll start school the next day on June 7th with the students. So the extracurricular programs we have this summer, we're offering uh, everything that we have in the past. So as I mentioned, we have the elementary fine arts, grades three through five. We have the Say Yes, the Makerspace. We have our summer youth program, which is run by Victoria Galleta out of our community ed program. That'll be in the DAP cafeteria. Now that lasts a little bit longer. That's from June 12th through August the 4th, and that's from 7.30 to 5.30, and that's on a sliding pay scale uh, for parents in the community. We have our middle school fine arts program, Mariachi McAuliffe, middle school band at SCOBY, fine arts academy with secondary at Southwest High School, all secondary choir and art will also be at the high school, and then all of our fine arts secondary at Legacy. And that was a quick rundown. Do y'all have any questions for me? Thank you, Patty. Okay, thank, thank you, Patty. Thank you. Okay, item seven we'll come back to after a closed session. Item eight, consider approval of Southwest ISD Scholarship Committee recommendations. Yes, we'll have uh, Mr. Jesse Garcia present this, but again, want to congratulate the board of this long-standing tradition that the board has continued. It was nice to attend that meeting because this has been going on for a long time. Um, but it was nice to be back to this and to see this, these amazing scholarship opportunities that the board provides for our students. Good evening, board members, Dr. Ball, senior staff. On March the 9th, the Southwest ISD Scholarship Committee met to review the qualifying number, the qualifying number of students for this year and the possible disbursements for this year. If you'll recall, not this last fall, but the fall before, once we added cast STEM, we changed it so that every student would receive the same amount. So we would have equal scholarships amongst all three campuses. So this year, I'm happy to report, we had 179 students who qualified and are eligible for the scholarship. Uh, we had $207,500 to give away to those students. Uh, let me back up a second. We had 16 students from cast STEM, 70 students from Southwest Legacy High School, and 93 students from Southwest High School totaling 179 students who qualified for scholarships this year. We had $207,000 and $207,500 to give away this year. And remember, from that total, we take out the money to pay for tax title and license for the cars that we give away for Toyota. There's also what we call a self-reporting scholarship where each high school gives away 10. All the students need to do is take uh, pictures of their award letters, they send them in, and we have a drawing at the end of the year. Uh, each high school, Southwest High School and Southwest Legacy do 10, um, CAS STEM does five. That additional money adds up to about $16,000. We take that off the top, which left us $207,000, $207,500,000, I'm sorry. And so from that amount, if we take the 179 students and we do, do the equal amount per student, it comes out to $1,160 per student this year. And now that's up from last year where we gave $565 per student. So it is up quite a bit from last year. So we are asking the board tonight to approve those 179 qualifying students at $1,160 a piece. And in addition, we do have a bylaw that right now limits the amount that our students can get per semester, which is $1,000. We would like you to consider raising that tonight to $1,160. So if there's a student who would like to get all of their funds in one lump sum for one semester, um, we would be allowed to do that. So do right. we need to move on both separately? Or no, it can, be, it can be one. Jesse, so we eliminated those higher amounts that we used to give a certain group of students mm -hmm. that met the Correct. higher requirement. The, and um, I just want to make sure that we, um, we ensure the letter is worded correctly because I don't want to have anyone coming up to us and saying, this right. says that I'm going to get it every semester. Yes, like we, we, we changed that, that when yeah. we got okay. that student who came in with that, that parent who came in with that. Thank but we you. will make sure and we'll, we'll check it again. Jesse. Yes. The um, scholarships that, or the awards they get for taking the um, pictures of their acceptance yes. letters. Wh what is the percent? Okay, so if you're giving the high school 10, and there's, I don't know how many kids are at the high school graduating, but how many are graduating from CAS STEM that they would get? Five. Is it like half or the number is like half? It or? is about 50 students this year, I think it is. And then um, how many is it from like Southwest High School? It's about 500 students. So is, is how did we come to the five for CAS STEM versus 10 for Southwest? Our, when our scholarship committee met, not this fall, but the fall before that, that's when they came up with those recommendations for 10 from each high school and then five for the 
cast them. But I mean, we can take it back to them. Again, I know that we've had um, not a large number of seniors with them, and so it is different when you have 500 at Southwest High School and 50 at Cast STEM. Um, and we can take a look at that again. And I think they were just trying to provide some opportunity for those students to receive. Why didn't we eliminate that and put all that money in the, the pot all together? I'm just wondering. I think it's a fun thing for the high schools. They, it is. They enjoy doing it. I just, uh, I just don't know that that's quite equitable. Mm -hmm. If there's 700 kids graduate or 500 kids graduating and they right. only have 10 chances, and there's only 50 and they have five chances. So, I, I mean, I, can I don't take know. That back to the I'm not on the committee, thing. so we're. I mean, no, 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 that's fine. We're going to go based on what the committee suggests, but if you could just take that back as a concern, maybe Definitely. for next year to look at it a little different, as yes. like to how many are actually participating in graduation. I can definitely do that. Maybe doing it by a percentage on the size, that would be a little bit more equitable. Mm -hmm. I think so. But I, I mean, I'll for this back. year, but for this year, we just go based on what okay. they're suggesting. I move that we approve that. Right. I already moved. No, we didn't move. Sorry. Mm -hmm. second. I have a second. Okay, we have a motion to second the board approve the Southwest ISD District Scholarship Committee recommendation to award a total of two thousand and seven thousand five hundred dollars to one hundred and seventy nine qualified students, awarding eleven sixty per student. In addition, students are allowed to request one lump sum of eleven sixty for disbursement if needed. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Hang, aye. On, hang on. Is that the right amount? Eleven yes, sixty? Okay. All right. Sorry. It's okay. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Jess. Okay, now, do you have an, anything you would like to bring up before we go into closed session? I do, sir. Thank you very much. You know, as we recently came up from spring break, we all enjoy spring break, but there are some groups of individuals that continue to do a lot for our district, and I want to recognize them because there's our ground crew and our custodians that continue to work. So I wanted to take this opportunity to publicly thank them uh, for their hard work during spring break so our facilities look good. There are also another set of individuals which are some of our coaches that they continue to coach, they continue to have games. So spring break is a little bit different for everybody. So I wanna thank those hardworking individuals. This Saturday is our first superintendent's coffee. So I want to invite anybody that's out there watching, want to invite any board member. We will be at McCullough. Very excited about that. We'll also have our first job fair for the spring here in house. Um, we will also be having a wonderful car show. Um, so if anybody wants to go to the car show, that's a, another great opportunity. I don't have this as an agenda item, so I won't be able to speak extensively except for to make the announcement that I'll call the board members if anybody has any questions in regards to my meeting with Sheriff Salazar that I had today. I finally was able to meet with him and I want to let the board know and anybody else also know that this is all proactive measures of what we are doing. There is nothing to be alarmed about at any of our campuses and I know that Southwest High School has recently been on the news but everything that we're working with Sheriff Salazar is to be proactive. Those are all the announcements I have. Thank you. With that said, as permitted by sections 551.001 through 551.146 of the Texas Government Code, and pursuant to Texas Government Code 551.074 and section 551.02, we will now go into closed session at 7.20. We come back to this meeting at 7.50. Go to item seven, superintendent's mm -hmm. recommendations on personnel and administrator employment resignations, reassignments, leaves of absences, contract renewals. I move that we approve the superintendent's recommendation on all of the, let me finish, on all of those things. <laughs> and we have, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay. We don't have any other business. No, I just know that you've got some beautiful shirts. Uh, 
you can attend our event. We appreciate it. And then there's a flyer, so feel free to spread the information. And of course, you have your calendar of events. And and by the way, uh, for the for the cafecito, yes, sir. Uh, board members, you're all invited. Just Rob asked me to remind you not to discuss business. Just enjoy your coffee. And donuts. And donuts. Oh, I can't one, come, but one, thank you for one the donut. Well, two of you okay. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday at McCullough. At what time, ma'am? At 9.30. <clears throat> oh, it's late. I've already had my coffee. <laughs> okay. This meeting is closed at 7.51.